Our gospel this morning is from Mark chapter 6. This is on, beginning at verse 45, on page 50 of the New Testament in your pew Bibles. Mark chapter 6. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. After saying farewell to them, he went up on the mountain to pray. When evening came, the boat was out on the sea, and he was alone on the land. When Jesus saw that they were straining at the oars against an adverse wind, he came towards them early in the morning, walking on the sea. He intended to pass them by, but when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out. For they all saw him and were terrified, but immediately... Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Then he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased, and they were utterly astounded, for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat there. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized Jesus and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into the villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. When I was in college up in Duluth, Minnesota, my roommate Jenny and I started rooming together midway through freshman year, dorm life. (laughs) And our sophomore year, we lived in an on-campus apartment, but we wanted to move off campus for our junior and senior years because it's what everybody did. We anticipated living in a clean, safe, affordable apartment in the cool part of the city near other students. First, we looked through the newspaper, and then we used a telephone that was attached to a wall, (laughs) right, to make appointments. Next, we used an actual paper map to find where we were going. Kids, if you can't tell, this happened in the olden days. <laughs> On the day we were apartment hunting, we plotted our route and drove through town when suddenly we found ourselves on a dirt road. In the city of Duluth, with a population of nearly 82,000 people back in 1997, Right off the main drag where there were businesses and everything, we drove down a hard-packed dirt road. No construction signs indicating that this was just temporary. It blew our minds. We wondered if we were lost, but eventually we made our way. In the end, we didn't live where we expected. We didn't rent the downtown apartment with the retrofitted closet that they called a shower. It was all cement and it had a drain. And we didn't even consider the place where the landlord looked at us and creeped us out. Mm -mm. But we did find a nice, clean, two-bedroom apartment in a traditional building with a sweet older gentleman named Clem, who was our building manager. We lived there happily for two years. Our journey was surprising. We took an unintended route, and we didn't end up where we expected. But in the end, it was okay, because where we ended up was the right place for us to be. This is the case with the disciples in our gospel today. They headed out for Bethsaida, but found themselves in Gennesaret a city kitty corner to their destination across the Sea of Galilee. 
In their travels, a big storm blew them off course, even though Jesus joined them in the boat. The disciples started with a plan and an expectation. They faced a surprising turn of events, and even though Jesus accompanied them, they still ended up in the wrong place. But I wonder, is it really wrong or simply not where they intended to go? I think we as Trinity Lutheran Church can relate to this. We are in a place we didn't expect to be. A relationship ended abruptly. Instead of a fond farewell, there's a broken goodbye. As Rich Verva preached to us the last time we found our disciples in a boat in a storm at sea, we are called to look forward to where we're going, not lament where we've been or that our destination changed. See, we, like those disciples, have endured some rough weather. We, like those disciples, have Jesus with us. So really, we're not heading to the wrong place. It's just not where we planned to go. This is the thing, though, with Jesus Christ. He's already everywhere. He's in Gennesaret. He's in Louisville. He's in Mexico and Alabama and the D Democratic Republic of Congo and Guatemala. Just like in the gospel lesson today, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is in this world bringing comfort to the afflicted, peace to the weary, and freedom to the oppressed. And we, the church, on our journey, we are called to go out and faithfully meet Jesus in the world. We meet him when we serve at the food pantry, go on the lift mission trip, even when we attend school and go to work. We never end up in the wrong spot because wherever we go, Jesus is there. Jesus is even with us on the journey. In the storm, even when we're blown off course, Jesus is with us. Now, I know that being blown off course isn't an appealing prospect to the planners among us. But what can you say of life? You pick a new major in college because your dreams change. You sell the business you started because it's time to think about retirement even though you're not done working. You give up driving, something your 16-year-old self could never have fathomed. You become a widow or a widower after all those years of marriage. Or you end a marriage or friendship because a relationship is ultimately irrevocably broken. We enter into things, be it relationships or careers or habits, planning they'll last forever, or that when it ends, it will end well, that we'll end up where we planned. But as you live in the real world, you experience storms. Your plans and expectations change, and it's hard. Change is hard. Change is hard work to endure, especially change not of your own choosing. And the grief that comes with it is tough, too. Grief that you find yourself at a different destination altogether. Although we've encountered rough weather and our route is recalculated, Jesus is with us on this emotional, spiritual, and communal journey and Jesus is at our destination. His consistent, constant presence with us is our message to share with, in word in, and deed like in our gospel today. Near the end of the gospel, it says that the sick begged that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. Now, where have we heard that before? A few weeks prior, with the healing of the woman who had bled for 12 years, she touched the edge of his garment and was healed. Word spread. 
Now here in a new place, a new crowd, they've already heard the story of her healing, the amazing things Jesus has done, and they ask for the same. This is the message to spread. Because of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God's grace and mercy is for all people. This week, our LIFT students will live into this reality of sharing Jesus in word and deed. But not everything will go as planned. That's just how life is. That's how worship is. I plan and prepare so that I can roll with whatever comes up. We can plan for the future, and we should. We can prepare our hearts and minds, and we should. But remember, Jesus is still with us in the unplanned, the new route, the surprises. Jesus is with our kids in Louisville, and Jesus is with us in this place, wherever we're headed next. And when we get there, the grace, the mercy, the very presence of Jesus Christ, that will make it the right place for us to be. Let us pray. Holy God, keep us from fearing the unplanned, the surprises, the new route. For wherever we go, you are. Amen.